Welcome to part 18 of creating a 2D platform game using libgdx. Well, today what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little different. Um, unfortunately, I recorded the videos and I did not uh, um, uh, do the voiceover. So I'm going to try to do the voiceover now uh, while playing the video you, um, going there. So I'm kind of commentating the, the video this time. Um, so what we're going to, uh, so hopefully this works out, but what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create background textures and it's going to be a background texture that moves, um, pretty much with the character. Um, we've created a bush as I'm pulling up right now. Um, and it is just a pretty much just a plain bushy background. It should be seamless. Um, I believe it is seamless because it's only like a one pixel difference between the left and the right. So if you're looking at trying to make something repeat, make sure that you look at, at that and make sure you have like a smooth transition. I've also gone ahead and gone in the um, level of uh, the level. I've added all the bushes. They're about 128 um, pixels apart. Um, I have a level editor that I actually use and that's where I added them and just exported the first level. Now I only have these in the first level, it's not in the second level or anything else like that. So we're going to go to our texture, texture manager and the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in the new texture. So we're going to do public static texture bush and once we've created the static uh, variable we're going to do bush equals new texture gdx files internal sprite.bush.png. Now what that does is just loading up the um, texture like normal. Um, last tutorial we ended up um, doing that and remember we always need to cl um, close and clean up what we've done uh, that we're, what we've done. So we're going to do bush.dispose on there. So make sure we have these three elements the, the static variable, the create, and the dispose. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be creating a new object. We're going to call it bush, so new class. And we're going to call this bush. And let's create that. Since bush is going to be another game object, we're going to do extends game object. And then once we're done adding those in, we are going to uh, add an un the unimplemented methods. Okay. Now going through this, we're going to be putting in the constructor bush and we're going to be taking the x and y coordinates. Alright, so now we need, this time we don't have to worry about hitbox or the, the texture because we've already dealt with the texture and there's no hitbox because it's a background. All we need to do is create a sprite and so we're going to call our sprite sprite and we're going to import that and then we're going to be creating our sprite down here. So sprite equals, and I keep on doing this on almost every video, you put the dot instead of the equal sign. So equals new sprite, and then we're going to be using the texture manager dot bush. Okay, then, uh, yep, I'm making sure we're using that one, and then we're going to set the position to x and y. Okay, so doing a few things. Hits doesn't matter. Action doesn't matter. Um, just because we're not going to be doing anything with these. Again, there's no hitbox, so we're good to go there. Um, we could use update if we wanted to make things like sparkle through the bush or make something move. but Or we could use the hitbox as our character goes through it and make it interact. But um, that's, that's a different... Um, that's a different story. Uh, we don't need move left, we don't need move right, but we do need draw. So we're going to do sprite dot draw batch. And I think I skipped the, uh, um, yep I did, I did skip set position. So I'm going to go back and do that right now. So we're going to go to sprite dot set position and just X and Y. So that's pretty simple of a class. It's not going to be taking very much. Um, so now we're going to be going into cool cool guy gain. So um, let's see. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we have our array of game objects, but we don't want to interact with them the same way. Um, and we don't want to take 
uh, we don't want to compare the hitbox of the bush to the player because that's a null object because we don't have a hitbox and it'll just totally freak out the game. So we're going to be creating a brand new array list called first background. And I hesitated here for some reason. There you go. First background equals new array list. Oh, what am I doing? Go back. Um, array list game objects. So once we've created that, that we've initialized our array list. So we're pretty much good to go there. So we're going to go into load game next. And we are going to be loading in what we need to do for the bush. So we do else if type equals uh, bush. And then we are going to do first background. First background. Dot add. new bush and then we have to create and we have to take in two integers so we're just going to copy and paste um, from poll and then we're going to import bush oh, I'm going to clean it up first then we're going to import bush hit save and this shouldn't have changed anything but if we go to the main game and run this um, we're just making sure that everything still works perfectly. So now going back into cool game, we are going to then go to, we need to draw our objects. So right here is where we draw our main objects. That's where we draw our player. So what we need to do is we need to hit enter here and give us a little space to draw all of our objects before the player. This way the player is drawn on top of the background. So we're going to be using a for each loop. So for each element in uh, first background, we're going to name it to T. And we are going to just draw T. I'm going to run this. And see, now we have our backgrounds. And it moves with us. And it's perfect. Now you notice how we're trying to we're trying to we're playing around with it. We're using our hit conditions. Now one thing that you probably will notice is that this is a nice smooth background. But if you guys looked a little bit further back where we ha um, where our obstacles are, the, we're just drawing boxes on top. Uh, so that's a, that's a problem. Also here we're going to fix this in just a few seconds. Um, when we move to the next screen of next level, we ha um, we don't have uh, um, we lose our our objects, so we're not drawing them. And then when we went into the second level, we had them, even though we never added them into the file. So we're going to fix both of those r real quick. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy our draw script for our objects, and we're going to go to next level, and in the same spot, not right there, but up one line. Go up one line. There it is. There it is. And uh, uh, we're going to draw them there, so that will fix that. The second thing we wanted to fix is the player. So we need to go into the load level. And we, uh, when we load the level, um, sorry about that. When we load the level, we have that clear uh, list.clear. Now this time we need first background.clear. And that right there will clear the backgrounds out so we can load the new backgrounds in um, depending on what we were trying to do. So I think that's pretty standard. So let's take a look. So we can now move it around. Okay, we can jump over that. Like I said, the, the background, it, the spikes are just drawing over it. So if we removed one of the spikes, we would see the background there. Go there. Now the background is still there like before. And when we click the next level, the background is gone. So that's perfect. It's exactly what we wanted the background to look like. So now we're done. So this is pretty much it for the tutorial. I'm sorry that I couldn't talk and type at the same time. Um, this is a very interesting way of, of doing these videos.
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you're making something cool. And I will see you guys 